Hey, hello, I'm George Call here to introduce a new three-part series titled Borderlands. And uh, today is uh, blocking day. So in this 30-minute video, I show you how to fill in this um, 11 by 12 canvas and explain value colors or in every one of my mixtures, I tell you what I'm mixing. So if you follow along, you can paint with me, stop and start whatever you need. And that's what this is designed to do. Or if you just want to watch and figure out how I do these things and then do this from memory, that's fine too. Oh gosh, you know, every stroke is some sort of decision. You know, every time you pick that brush up, what brush you're going to pick up, and the mixture, and then how you're going to apply it. And it looks so simple when I'm doing this, but I do have like 15, 20 years behind me on. on uh, trying to perfect this stuff, maybe even more. I think I'm in the 20s, 22, 23 years. So it didn't come overnight. I'm not a born genius uh, with painting uh, or anything like that, but I applied myself and uh, this is the stuff that uh, came out. I enjoy it and uh, I'm really glad to be at this level of expertise that I can turn out paintings and go, ooh, that's kind of neat. So that's what I want you to get to. One thing you're going to have to do is get outside and paint. I know uh, this November morning we have snow all over the place, so our winter is approaching quickly. And uh, it's not always the most advantageous time of year to get out. But get inside if you can. Paint uh, still lifes, paint portraits. That's what I do once a week as a portrait. Life. And uh, then I can show you painting from uh, photographs. It's not the best way to paint, but it's a good learning process. All right, I'm talking too much. Let's get to today's painting. All right, thanks. Bye. Hey, good morning. Here in Colorado, we're going to start a new painting, a new three-part series titled Borderlands, and today is Blockin'. Let's cover this whole canvas in some sort of thin value color paint. And I'll explain what that is if you haven't been with me before. Value color is basically a value, a color scale from 0 to 10. And uh, dark to light is a value scale with a color in it. So that's what we hope to do today. Thin paints because we want to work on top of those paints uh, in part two and part three. So I hope to put together three 30-minute videos in which we complete this painting. I'm working on an 11 by 12 canvas. This is canvas on a gator board. And I think the canvas is a high-grade Fredericks. Nothing wrong with Fredericks. They make a good canvas. I wish it was linen and all that more expensive stuff, but for, you know, these little uh, oil sketches we do, I think that'll do us just fine. Okay. And I also know you guys probably aren't working on linen. It took me a couple years to understand how to use linen and really fall in love with it. I'm going to start with a, a number four rosemary, long flat series, 2025. All right. Let's draw with something here. So I'm going to draw with something with uh, a little bit of red, uh, a little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of Naples, you know, something kind of desert color, kind of warm. And I'll throw some, no, I don't want white in there yet, Naples. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to have a lot of foreground in this painting, so the interesting part of this painting, all those um, um, uh, buttes there are going to be above the center line. So this is a little bit above center line, somewhere in here. And I want to try to make sure I know where my mountain is going to be. Or my, my Big obelisks here. Might be too far over. And then over here we have a little 
fill it here. And we have some sort of a shadow shape that goes this way, this way. Shadow and more shadow. All kinds of shadow up here. And then another triangle in here. Shadow. And another shadow over here somewhere. I think I made him too tall, so I'm going to bring up the horizon that much and bring him over here more. It's best to make those drawing changes now than later. And you know what I didn't do? I didn't make a sketch on my sketch pad. I apologize for that. Alright, so that is going to come down a little. This is going to go up a little. I don't think it's too far off. I think that'll work for me. So if I'm going to change this drawing, I'm going to get rid of this lower bottom here. Oop, I better stabilize my canvas. I think I need to keep this thing level. Okay, let's think about this foreground now. If I really look at the reference, I see a big dark bush right down in this area. Kind of a big dark. And over here and here, is, this dark kind of goes up into this area here. And since I have more foreground than the reference has, I'm going to make my bushes a little bigger down here. Bring him up. Bring him up. All right. So now it's time to change things a little bit. I want to see that these two important areas are in the right place for me. So they are, they're kind of important parts of the painting, this drawing part, and this dark thing down here, which is basically the scrub bush they have down there. And uh, this is right over the Arizona border from Utah. So I'm getting back, I'm looking at it, and it looks like we're in the right place. Now I could make some drawing changes as I go along with my smaller uh, brushes. I also have a number 32025 right here. And uh, I think I don't need it for right now. So let's make a darker mixture. So in this, let's throw in more alizarin and more blue. And then some transparent oxide brown. And I'm going to throw in some yellow ochre gold. Throw in more red. More gold. More lizard red. More lizard red. That is nice. Okay, what happened to my brush? Here it is. So I'm going to add just a little bit of turp to it. Just a, I mean, I just barely got anything on my, my brush here. And I'm going to... Carry them off. Kind of goes up this way and then he kind of levels out in this area. And there's a bunch of other things going on in here too. And then there's some other guys right down here. 
and I'll put some shadows on them, and I'll put another one here, just to kind of show that we've got bushes and things like that running off of here. Okay, now I'm going to soften the top of these a little bit because we don't need so much dark on there. And I'm also going to put some sort of a, just some horizontal lines in here to show that there's going to be some other stuff going on in here. And now let's do some pale stuff on the mountains here. Let's get some blue in this mixture. Ultra blue and alizarin. 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 I'm sorry, the fan in the other room has just come on. It's the heater fan. It's a cold morning, 17 degrees here in Colorado. I'm going to do it on time. 20 minutes. My goodness, I am sailing. This is great. Got to have a little bit more blue in there. Little blue, little red. Little red. some darks over here, and I need some darks over here. And I might scatter some of this around here, down in here. Alright, let's come up with a foreground base color. And so I'm going to go to Naples and light gray and cad yellow. Cad yellow. And knock that down with some gray and now some orange. And pale it down with white. Just adding a little bit of game salt to it. And I think that's a good one for now. now. I want to keep this thin, so I'm going to add some Gamsol to it, just to keep it thin. And start working it in some of these areas right in here. As you can see, I'm not dilly-dallying, and I'm not pausing the, the camera. Cameras. I've got two of them going here. I've got an overhead and I've got the one behind me. So people describe me as a kind of a loose Impressionistic painter, landscape painter. But my first love is portrait. I love portrait. I have a portrait group on Thursday night. We're just always having a live model here on Thursday nights. It's so much fun. Okay, now I want to try to get some of these peekaboo white stuff coming through. It would be nice if I toned my canvas before I 
stir to my painting. But if I tell my canvas I like it dry, and I'm, I never quite know what I'm going to paint. So I'm always, so here's a good way to get rid of some of your peekaboos. And keep your paint thin. And I'm even thinning it even more. Alright. I'm going to clean old number four up here and put him off to the side. Start with a little smaller brush so I can get in here. And I'm going to move this dark stuff over to one side. Because I might be able to use it, time permits, on these bushes. But at least I know where my bushes are going to be, or my shrubs. Okay. So now I'm going to that uh, number two, Rosemary 2025. But i got to mix the color here. So let's start with some alizarin. Throw some of this in it from the side, white, white, and a little orange. Orange is really powerful. And as I said that, I put too much in, didn't I? And I really need a pale up on top. Pale. And I'm going to add some light gray to it. The light gray is actually uh, Blue Ice by Richardson. But that's a nice color for the side of these things. But I need some red for down below. So let's start with the pale stuff, which is right up in here. And here. And in here, I believe. And I think that's all I need. Now I'm going to go to the uh, more of the flesh tone. And I'm going to put that in. Down here. Don't think I like my mixture, but it's good for now. And I think I need this a little higher. And the pale color a little lower. Okay. I'm going to get some blues. I'm going to get some um, uh, cerulean into the mixture just to see how that works. I need a little red in there. Just added a touch of cad red. Now I'm working over, oh darn it, I put too much red in. That cad red is so strong. I'm working on top of a wet, uh, warm color, so let's see how this works. Perfect. I like that. Great shadow color for now. This would really go well in a, in a bigger painting too. I painted this before, and I've I just really love this location. It's coming across the Utah border into you know um, into Arizona, into Monument Valley. It's just a magnificent scenery. It just grabs you. I'm gonna put some of this down here. See if this works down here, since I've got some. 
All right, let's get some sky color in this thing. And we're really getting down the, down the path. Let me put this over here, this over here, and this over here. Trying to keep my palette organized and under control. It's almost a full-time job. I do that because if I do that, I have a big mixing area. And big mixing areas are very important in this business. Okay, let's get some pure white out here. And let's get some sieve rays. Touch of uh, Viridian. More white. More white. It's very pale. And that should be able to do it. I better change brushes if I'm going from these warms to a cool. I better change brushes. So I am getting the stiffness out of a number six Shiraz flat. It's a number six. I didn't paint last week because, uh, I mean, have a video last week I painted. Uh, because of the uh, Thanksgiving weekend. I'm just going to try to cover some territory here. You can see I'm adding a little bit of Gamsol to this to keep it thin. And you know I usually make it dark up on top and lighter as it comes down. I don't see any change in, in that, in this reference, but it may be needed later, I don't know. But right now I can just put this stuff in thin and get some sort of sense of how my colors are working together, how my color values. So I'm just getting the big areas first, and then I'll see if I can get in those little tight areas along the edges here in just a minute. You can see I'm, I may have chopped off too much there. There's a little cleavage, right? a little edge that goes in there. And I didn't get that in. But I'm getting a sense of how this value and value color is working with the rest of this stuff. So what I'm going to do, I have a little bit left over, and I'm just going to add that up into here. Because as you can see from the reference, it's just kind of lighter in here. I'm really trying to stretch this and get as much out of it as I can, and I'm not doing, there's not much left. And I'll put some right over in here. All right, let's make some darker green. Let me check my time for the top of the bushes. Eight minutes! My God, life is so good this morning, I'll tell you. I think it helped that I've painted this before. And I'm not working on a huge canvas. And I'm just trying to emphasize to you all, um, loosen up a little bit, okay? Loosen up. All right, so I am going to uh, get some ultra and some yellow ochre. Yellow ochre. And I'm going to get some emerald. That's too strong, but it's a good base. Knock it down. Added some Naples to it. Naples is a good mixer. 
And this is called light viridian, and it knocks it down even more, too. Light viridian is nothing but viridian and a bunch of light in it. A little bit of blue. What a beautiful color! I'm going to go back to my number 4 2025 rosemary. So, 2025s are kind of like hog hair. It's a little stiffer stuff. And I'm starting to get some of this stuff in here. Oh, that's too heavy. Come on. Put it in thin. I'm just going to add some gun salt to this to thin it out a little. Some darks in the background, so I'm going to go some ultra, ultra blue, and transparent oxide red, a little bit of viridian, and a dark gray flattener, dark gray, and I'm going to start putting some stuff here in the background. In other words, it's not saying dark. It's going back. Here's your darks is in front. All right, those are my darks. And the darks are put in such a way you can see it kind of leads back in here to, uh, to our supporting uh, guy right here. I'm always trying to think, you know, um, composition. I'll get some green in here too. They've got so many interesting tortured greens in, desert, in the desert country. I love them all. I see some darker reds back in here. I'll go up into this red pile we have. And add just a little bit of rust to it. So it shows up. And it's right in here. Watch how it shows up. Boom. A boom. I'll show you what that rust color is in just a minute. And I'll put some up in here too. And uh, that color, what is this stuff? It is great. It's called uh, Light Oxide Red by Rembrandt. And it's series 339. Be careful with it. It's very strong. Very opaque. Okay. I need to concentrate now on starting to get into the balance phase, so I'm going to get some more darks in this area right here because this is really important. So I'm getting some alizarin and blue. And now I'm going to get some of that red, I call it rust in here, right in here. Oh, is that nice. Nice! That's what I'm calling it. It's great. You can see it really shows up now. That's what I'm looking for. These darker guys should be in front. And I'll add a little bit of rust in the areas back in here. Okay, now what I need is a, some of this, looking at this now, the foreground color, it's too dark. So, let me see my time remaining. Two minutes. Well, I'm going to lighten this if I run out of time. And um, that'll be some of my homework. So, for your homework, balance this thing out. You know, is this too dark? Is this too light? And work some of your color values to where the um, whole composition is working together into one orchestra. 
symphony. All right, so let me see what I can do about lightening that up. Again, it takes time to just clean your palate. Because you're in control of your palate, your palate is not in control of you. When it's a mess and you don't know where things are, that means it's in control of you. So we're going to go with some Naples and some Cad Yellow and a hook of white. Just, just a little bit of orange, please. A lot of white. A lot of white. A little bit of orange. Orange. That's what I'm talking about. There it is. It looks so good on my palette. Let's see if it works good on here. Nice. Let's get the top in here, huh? So I'm going to go back to my uh, number six Shiraz and start getting that in. That has sky color in it. I think I wore most of it out, but watch what it does. Now we're lightening this and we have a lot of contrast going on now. If I jump here in just a minute, I know that timer is going off pretty soon to tell me wrap this thing up. so much for part one of Borderlands. I'll see you in part two and uh, fill this whole canvas in with value colors and I'll see you in part two.